stories we're working on. Dave, thank you. Straight back to today's developing news we've been bringing you since the 7 o'clock hour. The Supreme Court ruling that blocks, for now, the Trump administration's effort to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Printing of those census forms is supposed to begin next week. Let's talk more about this with political professor Steve Wolbert of St. Mary's College in Moraga. Thanks for joining me. A pleasure. What statement did the High Court make this morning? That they didn't believe the secretary's reason for wanting the question to be put on the census form. They said it was a pretext. The facts in the case didn't support his argument for why he wanted to ask the question. And so what does the Trump administration do now? They have to go back to the district court in New York and offer a truer explanation for their uh, wanting to include the question. If there's still time for them to do that, uh, they want to start printing the questionnaires on Monday. Do you think there will be, will there be, a, oh, actually, we can start printing on October 1st, or do you think that July 1st is a hard deadline? If they had, if they had uh, sufficient resources, they might be able to postpone it, and then they'd still have to persuade not only the district court in New York, but there's a separate case in Maryland that raises a new question about whether or not the secretary's motive was discriminatory against Latinx voters. So at this point, it looks doubtful at best that the 2020 census will include this citizenship question. That's correct. Although the Census Bureau has told the Commerce Secretary that they can provide the same or better evidence about citizenship from other sources, so they don't really need to have this question to get the data they want. So as the Trump administration refocuses and does more work, what's been the reaction among immigrant communities and their supporters? Relief, I'm sure, because there would have been an undercount of immigrant people in this census had the question been on some estimates as many as nine million people might have answered falsely or not answered at all it would have really distorted the reapportionment of congress and the allocation of federal funds and this affects money for public schools money for highway repairs it also goes to the house of representatives how many people represent you in washington which eventually affects the electoral college and the presidency. Yeah, the consequences here are huge. This is probably the most important case of the term for the Supreme Court in terms of the political consequences. Is this the first time a citizenship question has been proposed for the census? No, it was regularly on until the 1950s, then they removed it, and as I said, they were able to provide citizenship data through other surveys, so it just wasn't necessary. Um, and it appears that the underlying reason that the Commerce Secretary wanted this was to give a structural electoral advantage to rural and non-Hispanic white voters, which is discriminatory. What do you imagine immigrants' rights groups are doing right now, other they're, than celebrating? They are celebrating and they're going to watch to see what happens if the Commerce Department tries to resurrect this question in the waning minutes that they have before they have to start printing the form. They want to be ready to respond in court, both in New York and in Maryland. Okay, Professor Steve Wolpert of St. Mary's College, thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Of course, Mike. All right, Cassia, Professor, thank you. Moments before that ruling on the census, the Supreme Court ruled on redistricting that could reshape the nation's political map. The high court says federal courts have no role to play in policing political districts.